Hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mac, playfastfootball.blogspot.com. Sorry it's been a while since our last blog, but uh, currently our high school I'm working at is going under some uh, construction of the gym, redoing the heating and the air, and I've been moved into a portable outside, and the weight room's been moved, and a lot of things have been going on the last month, so uh, I've been kind of busy also trying to figure out a place where we could shoot it, so I'm in somebody else's classroom today shooting the blog. Today we're going to talk about uh, some D-line games, some D-line stunts, a little bit of movement up front, try and, uh, try and help your defense out a little bit, uh, you know, in the run game, in the passing game, try and see if you can uh, fool with the offensive lineman a little bit with your, with your movement, try and see if you can uh, change some gap responsibility within, within some zone schemes or just some, uh, just some th simple things you can do to build movement uh, with your D-lineman in. And then uh, we're going to talk a little bit how the, the gap exchange work with, uh, with our linebackers behind them. All right, and, and just going to go through, you know, some of the ones that we like to use and, and why we like to use them. Uh, you know, again, we're an over team. We're an even front team. Uh, we're going to play with uh, three, five, one, and five. All right, for me, the nose in the end. Uh, my nose is a three technique. I've said this before. I was a three, four guy. My nose and my end were always... You know, my guys that were traveling together, my tackle and my rush were guys that were traveling together. So for me, it was easier to keep the nose and the end together and the tackle and the rush together. So that's why you see me always throw the nose up as a three technique. It's easier for me in, in my terminology and things that I can remember to put the nose with the end and in an over front. Now the nose becomes the three technique on the strong side and an under front, he'd be the A-shade guy. So I keep the nose and the end together. I keep the tackle and the rush together. All right, so what we're going to talk today is, is mostly about our one and two man games uh, and the ones that we like to use predominantly um, up front to kind of give us some movement, cancel out some gaps, and, and uh, you know, kind of help just uh, throw off the O-line a little bit and, and uh, you know, kind of cloud some things up for the other team. Um, you know, first thing we're going to go through it, like I say all the time, um, I'm going to show you what we do and why we do it in high school. Um, and it may not be the way that everybody does it, which is fine. It's definitely not the way sometimes a lot of the things are done at the college or the NFL level, but there's a reason why we do it. We're always aiming for simplicity, and, and we want to know that, that what we've got called is going to be run. Uh, we don't read out of any of our stunts. We don't have any stunts for us that are, you know, stunts where if it's run game, we don't run it, but if it's pass game, we run it. Or if it's pass game, you know, one guy goes first and, and another guy goes second. One guy's a penetrator, the other guy's a looper. We kind of kind of keep all our stunts for us where we know if we're running that stunt, we're running it no matter what. And then on the back end, our linebackers or safeties or whoever's involved behind it has to understand what's going to change for them if it's run or if it's pass or if it's, you know, how those things are going to fall in line. So within the games that we're running, we're going to run them. If we call it, we're running that game. We're not taking that game off. Okay. All right. So first one I'll show you is just on the uh, on a strong side. All right, what well, people like to call you me games between the three and the five technique. All right, and it all depends on who you want to call it, whether it's the end or the three. But the you me game basically tells them which one's going to go first in some type of exchange game. All right, so if we were speaking from the defensive end's uh, vantage point, the first one we're going to draw up is a you game. All right, and, it, and uh, I'm sorry, we're going to talk about a me game first. All right, a me game means defensive end that's talking is going first. All right, so it's just a simple gap exchange between the three and the five where we're going to take, all right, the five and bring them under first. We're going to take the three, all right, and bring them outside behind that. All right, now, when we run this game, okay, when we run this game, there's no gap exchange for the Mike linebacker. All right, the Mike linebacker has nothing to worry about as far as gap exchanges are concerned. All right, we're basically just switching the gaps of the three and the five technique. So the Mike knows that he's a primary A-gap player on runs to him. His gap's not going to change. So if he gets an inside run right at him, he's still got to be an A-gap player. Especially if it's one-back stuff, you got to think one-back, one-gap, and Mike's got to be an A-gap player. All right? What we're doing is we're changing, all right, the B and the C-gap players here. So what we're doing is we're taking the end down hard right now. All right? The end has to understand that he now has to look at the guard as his indicator. That's going to be his B-gap. All right? If that guard tries to block out or zone, that end has to understand that he's got to stay on the outside half of that guard in the B-gap. If that guard tries to block down or tries to leave, now that end's got to kind of squeeze and chase down inside because that B-gap's kind of moving and traveling a little bit. All right? Your nose has to understand that he's going to go second. He's got to let the end penetrate first. All right? So your nose is going to be second. 
Whether you want to loosen him up off the ball, whether you want him to take one or two steps up the field, it's all what you're comfortable teaching. All right, You can loosen him a little bit off the ball. Sometimes on film that may give your stunts away, but if you want to worry about execution, you can loosen him up a little bit All right, and have him go. You can have him take a step up the field and then go. It's whatever you're comfortable teaching. We don't get too involved with how much we're engaging how many steps we're selling the stunt on. If we're running the stunt, we're running it for movement, we're running it for gap exchange, we're running it to kind of cloud things up for the other team. All right, so again, it's not what you would um, foresee as maybe, you know, your college or your NFL stunts where we got to read things and if we get a certain block, we got to do a certain thing. When we run this, all right, if we recall this a me game, we know that the end's penetrating first, we know that the nose is going second. Now your nose is going to end up being the contained rusher in the passing game. If he gets option or zone read at him, your nose has to understand he now becomes a quarterback player the same way the end would in a base philosophy would be the quarterback player. We simply exchange the gaps with the three and the five technique on that side is really all we've done. All right. Again, we'll use it to kind of cloud things up for the O-line. We'll use it to, all right, if we're, if, if we're playing base defense and you know, we're getting the ball run at us to that strong side, we'll use it as a changeup. All right, it's just something that presents movement, clouds things up for the O-line, and if we have guys that we like moving and we don't like them stagnant, if they're maybe smaller or they're not as stout at the point of attack, all right, it's a way to generate in movement without changing any of your gaps up front. So nothing's really changed up front for your mic or your will on the back side. Nothing's changed on the front side, all right? The next one we'll talk about, all right, would be the U game. If we were talking from the end's vantage point, all right, the U game would tell the nose, all right, that the tackle would be talking to the nose and saying, hey, you penetrate first. Now, here's, this is the way, again, this is the way we run, okay? We take the nose and we penetrate the B-gap as hard as we can right now, okay? And we tell that nose, all right, when he penetrates that B-gap, that he's now going to be looking at the inside, all right, knee hip or the inside portion of the tackle to see if he gets a run block or a pass set. All right, the nose that's now going first is going to end up being a contained player in the passing game. He can either set the contained edge in the passing game by getting deep penetration, or he can redirect outside of a high hat pass set. Depends on the player you have, depends on how good he is at, at getting penetration up the field. All right, it's one of those things that can be done either way. He can either penetrate the B gap deep enough that he's a contained player, or if he cannot do that and he gets a high hat by the tackle, he can redirect and get outside after the hi-hat. Again, he's penetrating the B-gap no matter what the block is. And when he does that, we're probably going to get him a little bit looser and we're going to bring him through the near shoulder, near knee hip of that tackle. Okay? He's going penetration no matter what. He's not changing what he does based on down block, zone block, pass set. He's doing what he does, you know, irregardless of what the offense does. The only thing that may change is if he's not a good penetrator, now if he reads on his penetration, if he reads a high hat by the tackle, now he may have to, all right, go wide and cross face outside the tackle to become a contained player if he can't contain with just straight penetration. So he's going to go first, he's going to go hard, probably loosen him up a little bit, and he's going hard through that inside shoulder of the tackle, all right, trying to figure out what blocks he's getting from the tackle. Is he getting hard down blocks? Is he getting zone away? All right, if he's getting zone or outside zone, we want to penetrate as hard as we can. If he's getting down block, we want to hold the point. He's getting past set, we can either penetrate and beat it for contain, or we can loop back outside. All right, we're going to take the five technique, and he's going to become the loop player on a long stick inside. We usually like to take him one step up the field and bring him back underneath on the long stick. Okay, now, a lot of guys at the college and the NFL level, you'll see that if it's going to be a pass stunt that they're going to run, they're going to try and get three up the field before they ever loop. Okay, probably the better way to run it all right, in a passing down situation, a better way to get the stunt to mesh, a better way to get those offensive linemen to kind of set and declare who they're on, and then bring the five free underneath in a pass rush situation. Because we run this regardless or irregardless of what the offense does, we go one step up the field first and then we come back. Sometimes we got to loosen the five technique depending on who he is, all right, depending on the type of player he is, but again, we're not engaging and going, we're not reading out of it, we are going long stick A gap no matter what. All right, so we're going, all right, nose penetrate, hard B gap first. We're going one step, long stick, A gap with the end second. That end has to understand what the guard does, all right? If the guard blocks out, he's got to cross his face to get to the A gap. If the guard blocks down or, or zones inside, he's now got to flatten a little bit to chase where the A gap was. 
All right. If he if the if the guard blocks away on his long stick, he's not going to be able to cross the guard's face into the a gap. So now when he long sticks, if the guard's moving away, he's got to flatten out and make sure he at least puts the guard's body in the a gap. Two ways to play a gap: your body or the offensive lineman's body. Okay. So if he can't cross the guard's face on a zone away from him, all right, he's got to now flatten out and make sure he can put an offensive player's body in that a gap. Okay. Now, it is a gap exchange for the Mike linebacker on run two. If the Mike linebacker gets a run to him now, all right, at the strong side, a run at his side, he now becomes a tight C-gap player. One of the things our linebacker coach and our defensive coordinator, all right, that he does when he does linebacker drills, he has them taking their run reads, and he's got different drills that he does, and he shows them which side, all right, is it run to or run away, and he wants to see them take the appropriate steps. He'll call out a stunt up front that's got a gap exchange, like, all right, like this U game right here, and then he'll give the mic a read where it's run right at him to see if the mic takes his initial read run steps and then goes tight to make himself almost a, a, a ghost seven technique, tight off of where the C gap is, all right, tight right now if the ball were to show front side, okay? Now, your mic also has to understand, all right, this is where sometimes in, in his own read game you get in a little bit of trouble. I don't like it as much. If the back were set here, all right, and you were getting some zone read stuff, if you don't get heavy penetration by the three, and the three gets either scooped or cut off, technically on paper, the mic would end up becoming the guy that has to play the pull of the quarterback because essentially the mic's the C-gap run player, all right, in that defense. So if you're running that game right there and you're getting zone away, you have to make sure that your five technique can really take away this A-gap here because your mic is probably gonna have to hold on the backside to be the pull player on the quarterback. So when you're getting a lot of zone read or a lot of stuff like that, not the greatest game in the world when you're getting zone read, where I really like it, all right? I like it when the zone's coming at the three and the five, okay? I like it when the back is here and you're getting zone at the three and the five, and I'll tell you why, because most zone teams, when they start declaring it, all right, they're gonna get their center to declare up to that Mike linebacker. So when they start IDing it and declaring his own scheme, they're gonna think that it's gonna be tackle on five, guard on three, center up here, scoop the one, get up on the will linebacker right there. So a lot of times that center, when he's got the open A gap to his side, he'll start working to climb up to the mic. And now what happens is you get the nose first and he eats up the zone block of the guard. When the end comes back under here, a lot of times the center has already climbed to the mic and when the zone comes back at it, you can bring your, a, your five, long, five technique, long stick, A-gap player clean back into the A-gap, okay? Now, your will linebacker has to understand that on runs away from him, his primary cutback A-gap is gonna be, is gonna be played by the, five stick, uh, the long stick five technique, all right? So now your will's on run away from him, he's gotta be able to understand and be able to read what's going on. He can hold backside a little bit longer and now when he starts to run on runs away from him, all right, he's got to see what's going on with the five technique because the long stick player, now he might be able to run further over the top if the long stick player is occupying the A gap, all right? Because now primarily with an open A gap on runs there, your will linebacker would become the first primary cutback player in that A gap. Well, now that the A gap's taken care of, he can play a little bit slower on his cutback and now he's got to be able to read what's going on. So if there's the five technique, with color long stick in here, he might have to scrape even further over the top, okay? And that all depends on what you got coming behind the will, how fast he can play the front side, all right? But I like the will to understand when the A-gap's being taken away by a D-line stunt because I want him to know where those cutbacks are gonna occur and when he can play a little bit slower knowing that his front side cutbacks are taken away, all right? So that would be a U-game, penetrator first, and long stick coming underneath. Again, I like it a lot better in the run game when you're getting when you're getting the zone at the three and the five, I don't like it away from. I don't like it away from the three and the five as much. So if you were getting zone read teams, set the three away from the back and run that game. Comes clean a lot. It's a good pass stunt if they do show pass. We run it whether it's run or pass, and and you know if you can get the center to set away from the three and the five, and the nose does a good job. A lot of times that long stick guy will come clean. So you just gotta understand within your game plan when you're trying to run it, how you're what you're trying to accomplish by running it, all right? Next one we'll run on the front side is we'll bring the three and the five under, all right? So we'll bring the three under to the A gap, we'll bring the five under to the A gap, all right? Again, when we call that stunt, we're running it no matter what. We're not running it versus run or pass or whatever we get, we're running. So now, now your three technique has got to be able to spark the A gap. 
Your five techniques gonna be able to spark the B gap. If we're getting hurt with a lot of strong side runs, all right, and we can't handle a point of attack, a lot of times, especially for us as a quarters team, all right, if we wanna get our safety a little bit more involved in what's going on, we'll try and push the ball wider by, by occupying the front side two gaps now with the three and the five coming under, see if we can get push the ball to bounce. Now again, because the A and the B gap are taken away, your Mike Linebacker now on runs to him, Mike Linebacker becomes a primary C gap player because we think the ball's gonna get sent to him. All right, your Will Linebacker now has to know that the A, a gap is taken away so he can be a little bit slower. When he does start to go, if there's bodies and there's a lot of color here, he may have to run further, all right? To, to fit inside of where the mic is going to send it back. If you were to get like a power scheme or a pull scheme and you got a guard that was doing that, you would expect your mic, all right, you would expect your mic to get in there and spill, all right, that guard. So now your will would be the overlap player when the mic spills that guard, all right. But most of the time when we do that, the mic would be spilling it to a safety or a support system. But that's, you, you got to at least make sure your backside linebacker understands that his primary cutback gap is taken away. We haven't affected, his run to gap hasn't been affected yet. It's still gonna be B gap. On runs away, his primary cutback is taken away. So if we do a good job of getting bodies in the A and the B gap, when it is run away, he can be a little bit slower. And then when he does go, he may have to run to, to, to kind of overlap if the mic becomes a spill player. All right, so again, three and the five come under, runs at that side, the mic's gotta become a C gap player now. And you gotta make sure your Mike linebacker understands that that's on runs at him, okay? Runs at him, all right? Again, now you start getting into the zone read game. I don't like it as much with the back on my side because technically on paper, the Mike becomes the quarterback player and it becomes kind of like a scrape and replace theory in a way, all right? But what ends up happening is now your Mike has to hold backside for the QB. So if you don't do a good job with the three and the five, a lot of times the zone coming this way, all right, can cut back with the Mike running away from it because he's the quarterback pull player, all right? Or at least that's the way we do it. So I don't really like it as much when we're getting zone read away from the three and the five. I would like it better with the zone coming back at the three and the five to see if we can get the ball to bubble out or to bounce. I like it a lot versus two back runs, all right, to try and see if we can get the ball to come out a little bit wider. Now, if you do get past, you have to understand now, your one technique becomes an A-gap run player. And if he gets a high hat, he's gotta be a guy that loops to the strong side to contain on passes. Now this one takes a while in high school to teach. Not a lot of true high hats, not a lot of teams that throw it 30 or 40 times a game. You have to make sure your one technique understands, all right, how to loop strong on this particular stunt when the three and the five are coming under to the B gap. And, and uh, I'm sorry, the A gap and the B gap, all right? So you gotta be able to teach the stunt coming under from the three and the five. You gotta be able to teach the mic what his primary run to Gaps are, you gotta to talk to the Mike about zone read because if the quarterback gets out, Mike might be a primary quarterback player. You gotta to talk to your Willie a little bit about how to play cutback, all right? And then all right, make sure in the passing game you're talking about who's looping and how you're containing it. All right, so it's more than just the two guys stunning that need to know what's going on. It's a gap exchange for the Mike. You've taken away his primary A gap. You've taken away his B gap, so you've made him, all right, a primary C gap player on runs to him, all right? At the same time, all right, you've also made your one technique become a looper to contain in the passing game, okay? So on the front side, all right, those are three stunts we like to use. We like to use a me, we like to use a you, and then we like to use both guys coming under from the three and the five side, all right? Now, as an over team, one of the other things we like to do is we like to use our interior guys. We like to stunt. All right, the one and the three inside because it gets us into an under look. Okay, so another game we like, all right, especially versus versus heavy run teams, all right, not as much of a passing stunt, doesn't get you a lot of mileage in a passing game. It's more of a run stunt. We like to take the three and spark them. We like to take the one and spark them, okay? When we do that, we've essentially gone from an overlook to an under look. Because now on the front side, we've got the one technique and the five, and the Mike's a B gap player. On the back side, we've kind of reduced it with a three and a five, and the Willie becomes an A gap player. So now here, all right, we haven't done anything to the edge, so we're fine there, but we've taken, we've changed the gaps of the one and the three. So now the, the Mike becomes a B gap player, and the Willie becomes an A gap player. So there's a gap exchange on front side runs for the Mike and the Will. Your nose has gone hard to the A, 
tackle's gone hard to the B, all right? So at the snap of the ball, all right, once the movement occurs, what you've gotten yourself into is you've gotten yourself into an under front. So just so you can understand what I'm talking about, a lot of times as an over team, when you play tight end teams, all right, a lot of times if you play teams that are tight end teams and you're an over team, you're constantly, for us, we sit with a seven, a three, a one, and a five with a mic and a will, all right? Because we're a 4-2 structure, that's what our box looks like, all right? Whereas an under team, all right, an under team or a reduction team would sit, all right, more with a nine, a five, a shade, a three, and a five there, and an under front would look like that, okay? So for us, rather than playing both over and under fronts, all right, because we don't want to teach a guy how to play a nine technique. We don't want to teach our strong safety how to play a nine. All right, we move to an under front. So for us, what we would do, okay, is we would take that front. We would move the three and the one post snap. And now, essentially, what we've gotten into is we've gotten ourselves into an underlook. So now, even though it's post snap, we've gotten ourselves into where now we have the A front side, the three back side. Okay? Our strong safety wouldn't play as a nine. He would play, all right, three by three off a tight end or wherever we need him, all right, because that's where we teach him to play, and we don't teach him to play off a tight end as a nine. All right? So it won't look exactly like an under front, but it gives. All right, the illusion of being an under front with a front side A, back side B, Mike becomes a B player, Willie becomes a back side A player. All right, you're getting a lot of teams that are running weak side ISO. All right, it'll help you a lot taking away the big bubble by moving him, getting your Willie linebacker to get back into the A gap, getting some movement from your nose there. All right, so we use it, we use it primarily, all right, we use it primarily in the run game. We use it to get some movement from the two interior guys. All right, we use it. Um, we use it to change the gap responsibilities of our linebackers, so it clouds things up for the O-line. Um, not a great, not a great uh, pass game stunt with the two interior guys moving like that. Doesn't do you a lot of good. We have another stunt with the two interior guys we use that, that's a little bit better for, uh, for passing game situations. But on the inside, we like to use the three and the five, move them away to give us the appearance of an under front. So now you've gone from an overlook there to where now by sparking the three, and the one, you've got yourself into an underlook. So we can do that without having to play the under front. All right, one of the last things we like to do is on the weak side, we'll gap exchange. And this is more of a this is more of a two by two stunt for us. On the weak side, we'll go ahead and we'll run. A lot of times if it's two by two and we have to sit like this. All right, and we have two receivers out there. One of the ways for us to gap everything out is we'll take the rush end and we'll run, all right, a B gap stunt right now, okay? And what we've done now is we've taken the B gap away from this Will linebacker having to fold it. The Will linebacker becomes more of an edge player there and a quarterback player in his own read game, okay? And and uh, we've, we've taken away him having to fold back under. We don't have to worry about what the block is of the tackle. If the tackle blocks out or blocks down, we don't have to two-way exchange it between the rush and the will. We're just going ahead and gap exchanging it right now, taking away the big bubble, all right, and making it a little bit easier for the will linebacker. Now, we do make a shorter corner. If you get sprint out of speed option, that's a little bit of an issue. But if you're getting just standard drop back pass, run game stuff out of one back, this is not a bad stunt to take away the big bubble. Now you have to make sure your one technique understands he's a gap on runs, but he's the loop contained player in the passing game. All right, he doesn't have to be that guy in the in the zone read game. He doesn't have to do that automatically. Now we do have a way where we'll long stick the five and run the tackle out there automatically, but not in this game. This is a one man game. Becomes a two man game if it's pass. All right, becomes a two man game if it's pass. All right, now you get the rush under and you get the tackle to loop for contain. If it's run, it's a one-man game because your tackle inside here is still going to play A gap. All right, your rush is going to take away the B gap. Your will linebacker now understands that instead of being a B gap player on runs at him, he becomes a C gap player. If it was zone read away, your will linebacker would be the guy that's got to be able to fit up on the quarterback. All right, 
Another reason we use it, if we're getting a lot of two back weak side runs, you know, I don't know how much, if you guys study a lot of, uh, if you watch a lot of NFL football, they don't call it ISO, they call it lead weak or, you know, zone insert weak, but one of the number one running plays in football, all right, is a two back, all right, lead weak scheme where they're putting a the full back up all right, up on, on the linebacker there, they might be running some type of zone scheme, all right? Usually in high school, it's more of an ISO than a zone, all right? But they're going with a lead weak scheme there, all right? Might be zoning up there and then working good hard movement on the one, all right? So you're getting some type of lead ISO scheme. In high school, more or less, you would probably see double team back to Mike with an ISO on the will and a base block on the rush. But a lot of times in the NFL, the number one run play for them is zone lead weak. All right, so for us, if we got the big bubble set to the weak side, one of the ways that we're getting a lot of hard run at the big bubble, we can help that out by taking this rush in and bringing them under. All right, by doing that now, we're hoping that we're going to get the ball, all right, bounced a little bit wider. So now when it starts to bounce wider, we can get the Willie to overlap or front side now, the Willie would become a tight C gap player. And then depending on the structure of our defense, he's going to wrong arm it or spill it to him, or now that we've got the Mike linebacker on the backside here, all right, when he goes on, on runs away, his primary, once he's cleared his A gap, when he gets to the backside, his A gap is covered, his B gap is covered, he can start to run and become an overlap player now, all right, so that he can help fit off what the will does and become an overlap player on runs away, all right? We like to do it, especially if it's a single receiver out here and we're gonna play the safety down, all right? We like to do it to get the ball sent wider. So we like to take away the bubble with the rush, get the ball sent wider, get the willy tight to send it to our free hitter who's the weak safety out there. All right? So for us, it's a way to take away the big bubble. What I mean by big bubble is the one and the five for us are set to the weak side. So a lot of times, two back teams may want to run the ball weak a little bit more, all right, because that's where our big bubble is. We're reduced, or three and five, all right, with no tight end, all right, our big bubble is over here to the weak side. So if we want to take away the big bubble, we can do that with a one-man game on the back side. All right, and that one-man game becomes rush and under, okay? And now the Willie becomes a C-gap player on Ron's Adam. Tackle, if he gets past, your tackle's got to become a looper. All right, Mike Linebacker has to understand once he clears his back, his initial A gap on runs away, your Mike now has to understand that all his gaps should be accounted for. So now he can run to overlap all right, to what the will does. Hopefully the will understands to get a tight fitter in the C-gap and bounce the ball out to the weak safety. All those things you've got to teach in run fits and, 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 and all the other things that you're doing. But it helps us take away, all right, helps us take away uh, the big bubble. If it's one back, it helps us eliminate a gap and, and allows us to play the willy a little bit wider so he doesn't have to fold. And now we know, all right, how we're taking away that big gap. So just things you got to think about and, and how you want to do it. One of the only other ones, all right, that we use on the interior, and again, this is more, this would be more of a passing game stunt where it's red, but we don't read out of it. We'll use, all right, we'll get the nose a little bit thicker, and we'll use a stunt on the inside, all right, where we bring the nose straight through the center, working to the backside A gap there, and then we'll bring, all right, the tackle second trying to loop back, okay, and, and really try and get them into the A gap on that side. We don't ever think we can get the tackle to the B gap, so it's really just a double A gap stunt. We try and get the nose hard through the center to the back side A gap. We try and get the tackle looped over to the front side, okay? Really good passing down stunt if you read it and you taught your two guys to read off where the center sets so you know who the penetrator and who the looper is going to be. All right, whichever way the center were to set, all right, if the center sets away from you, okay, now possibly you could be the penetrator and the backside guy could be the looper. Uh, you would teach it based off of the protection on the offense and where the center set, all right, so if the center set himself, all right, to the one, if the center set himself to the one, you could have the one be the penetrator with the nose looping behind it. If the center set, him, center set himself to the three, the three could penetrate and bring the tackle behind it. We don't read it out that way, all right? A lot of college or NFL teams or 
you know, even some high school teams might read it out that way. We run it, really to tell you the truth, we run it to gain, if we're getting a lot of teams that are going to run power counter and pull backside guys to the front side, we run it to kind of screw up the back block of the center, all right, and we try and gain the one technique to the front side. So by taking the nose back through the center hard and bringing the one technique over, a lot of times in gap schemes you can get these guys to work up to the linebacker level, all right, and you can get your one technique off of the three 